The latest images of Pluto reveal an incredible secret. The ice-cold dwarf planet could actually be home to life. The images of the mysterious rear side of the celestial body shine in a completely unexpected light. But how is this even possible? What led the researchers to their revolutionary rethink? Can we finally put a hook behind the search for extraterrestrial life? An average temperature of minus 242 degrees Celsius, a very thin atmosphere made of nitrogen, and a surface dominated by nitrogen ice. Pluto is not exactly what we would call a life-friendly celestial body at first glance. And yet, a new scientific study has come to the conclusion that the dwarf planet could actually be home to life, despite initial assumptions. This is the result of the long-awaited images from NASA's New Horizons space probe, which finally show us the mysterious back of the celestial body. Interesting to know, when the unmanned spacecraft set off for the realms of Pluto in January 2006, it was still allowed to call itself an official member of our planetary system. However, in August of the same year, the International Astronomical Union decided to rethink the planet definition from scratch. After more and more Pluto-like bodies had been identified in the Kuiper Belt, the list of our planets was threatening to burst at the seams. The revised definition states that from now on, a celestial body is only classified as a planet if it has cleared its orbit of other objects through its gravitational field. However, as Pluto is not the dominant celestial body in its orbit, it has since been enthroned at the top of the newly opened ranks of dwarf planets. Deeper than the Grand Canyon, higher than Mount Everest. But regardless of whether it's a fully-fledged planet or just a dwarf variety, the New Horizons images already showed us that Pluto has some unexpected surprises in store, as there are always between 30 and 50 astronomical units between the Earth and the former planet. It took NASA's probe a correspondingly long time to reach the galactic object of desire. For a better understanding, one astronomical unit corresponds to the average distance between the Sun and Earth, that is, around 150 million kilometers. But in 2015, the time had finally come. New Horizons had reached the farthest corner of the solar system and left terrestrial experts completely perplexed. Among other things, the images showed that Pluto's surface is actually much more dynamic and varied than previously assumed. Not only do grotesque formations of frozen nitrogen rise into the sky here, but also gigantic blocks of methane ice that would not have to hide from any earthly skyscraper. Furthermore, the outside of the celestial body is also adorned with several cracks that are even deeper than the Grand Canyon. In the same breath, Pluto also boasts ice volcanoes and put even Mount Everest in the shade. And then, of course, there was the gigantic heart-shaped area near the equator. The left side of this huge lowland plain is twice the size of Germany and, according to the researchers, could be hiding a subglacial sea. Pluto's dark side. Wait a minute. The day New Horizons plunged into the realm of Pluto was over eight years ago. The last transmission of Pluto data took place in October 2016. So how can it be that earthly researchers are still receiving new images? Well, the very simple reason is that the complex analysis of collected data is still in full swing. When New Horizons reached the former planet, it was traveling at a speed of 52,000 kilometers per hour, a speed that only allowed one side of the celestial body to be examined. Specifically, this was the hemisphere which was bathed in sunlight at the time. The other area, on the other hand, was in the shadow and was only visible a few days before the closest approach between the probe and Pluto. While the experts at the start of the mission were mainly dedicated to evaluating the close-up images, the shadow side of the dwarf planet is now the focus of interest. In terms of sharpness, however, these images are clearly inferior to the images taken previously. While the hemisphere reveals structures with a size of around 75 meters, in the darker regions, only 2 to 30 kilometer large formations can be made out. What sounds extremely coarse and blurred at first glance is actually 200 times sharper than the images that the Hubble Space Telescope once took of Pluto. Scientists are therefore welcoming new images with open arms, because they can probably help us solve the mystery of the Pluto Sea. A Hidden Ocean? 
you don't need a PhD in chemistry to know that the freezing point of water is zero degrees Celsius. But how can it be that a celestial body with an average temperature of minus 242 degrees harbors an ocean of liquid water? Shouldn't it be frozen as hard as a rock in the remote corners of the solar system? The surprising answer is, not necessarily. According to this, some components can act as a natural antifreeze, above all the so-called gas hydrates. These are gas molecules that are enclosed in a lattice of water ice. As gas hydrates have a very low thermal conductivity, they are perfectly suited as an effective insulating layer between the sea and the overlying ice sheet. In the case of Pluto, we are probably dealing with methane. This could be a relic of the material from which the celestial body was once formed. Alternatively, it is also conceivable that the methane was released as part of a chemical process in the rocky core. In their theoretical models, the researchers looked at the development of the subglacial ocean both with and without the insulating layer. The result? Without the natural protective layer, the hidden ocean would have frozen over several hundred million years ago. But with the insulating layer, it is probably still sloshing around today. And the images of the dark side of Pluto now suggest that this indeed is the case. In this regard, the scientists refer to a region that they call the chaotic terrain. This is a diffuse jumble of plains, trenches and mountains that lies opposite the heart-shaped Sputnik Planitia. We know from other celestial bodies such as Mars or Jupiter's moon Europa that such areas result from the impact of an asteroid. After the collision, seismic waves are chased around the entire body and as soon as the shock meets the opposite horizon, the surface breaks up, leaving behind a chaotic, furrowed landscape. In order to uncover the background of the formation of the Pluto area, the researchers simulated how a heavy impact would send seismic waves across the celestial body. And lo and behold, the roots of the chaotic terrain could actually lie dormant in the visit of a galactic projectile. And now comes the big butt. The subglacial sea is needed for the plane to present itself in the way that it does afterwards. Life is possible, but that's not all. If the ocean really exists, it could even serve as a habitat for simple organisms. This groundbreaking thesis is supported by some conspicuous traces of water that have left a red discoloration on the hemisphere. These in turn are interpreted by scientists as an indication of a high concentration of organic molecules. In other words, as evidence of those building blocks which, according to our knowledge, are a basic prerequisite for life. Laboratory experiments have shown that reddish, complex organic compounds can form when molecules such as water, nitrogen or methane are exposed to intense radiation. On Pluto, the corresponding radiation bombardment could be due to the solar wind. As soon as ammonia is added to the compounds, bases can even be formed that occur in DNA and RNA. The study published by the group led by New Horizons researcher Dale Crickshank in the Journal of Astrobiology explicitly points out that the ice on the hemisphere has a red color and also contains ammonia. However, these circumstances alone would not constitute clear proof of the existence of extraterrestrial microorganisms. And yet, the results suggest that simple organisms can survive on Pluto, so life is theoretically possible there. These have also met with a positive response from the rest of the research community. The evaluation of the data shows us once again how important such research flights are. Before the New Horizons mission, hardly any scientist would have thought it possible that a celestial body like Pluto would ever appear in a publication such as astrobiology. The bottom line is that two out of three points on the life checklist appear to have been ticked off. There is fairly clear evidence for the existence of liquid water. And now, data suggesting the presence of organic compounds. What the experts are still looking for is a suitable source of energy to maintain the life-friendly conditions. Where do the giant ice blades come from? However, we should not hide the fact that the images have not only helped to assess Pluto's potential friendliness to life, the experts noted something in some of the images that is still accompanied by big question marks. In detail, we are dealing here with an almost surreal region of colossal ice blades that are evenly distributed and in some cases rise a kilometer into the air. 
Furthermore, the ice blade scenery spans the entire dark side before reappearing at the western end of the hemisphere. And although we are apparently dealing with a very common type of terrain here, experts do not know how the sharp-edged methane ice belt could have formed around the equator. On one hand, it is conceivable that the methane originates from the atmosphere and has accumulated in a frozen form. On the other hand, there is a theory that this is a remnant of an originally much larger formation that was gradually reduced in size by sunlight. Pluto's erratic seasons could also have had a significant influence on the formation of the shapes. In contrast to Earth, the dwarf planet does not need 365 days to orbit the Sun, but 248 years. As the celestial body orbits our host star on an elliptical path, it passes the frosty edge of our home system in places. However, this is followed by a close approach to the Sun, whereby the prevailing distance is reduced by almost half. The combination of inclination and distance means that each area on Pluto only experiences the maximum possible solar radiation every 900,000 years. And who knows, perhaps one of these extreme summers has left behind an icy mystery for posterity. Press subscribe and stay up to date.